It's a portrait of uh, an Armenian exile, Gorky, who's uh, an abstract expressionist painter, and this is a, a scene set at the end of his life, and it's sort of a fever dream, and he's revisiting all these scenes from his childhood and his, his previous life in Armenia as his uh, present life in the United States is falling apart and his health is failing. Well, because this is the first step in a larger work, or the first um, moment that we're creating from a larger work, I wanted to find as much language of Gorky's that I could possibly um, sort of digest and then use that to leap off of and extrapolate. So this piece is sort of like a fever dream as Gorky is dying, and I used a lot of his own words, but I, I sort of fragmented them and created this weird sort of like watercolor of, um, of a man and his final recollections, and, and remembering his childhood and, and the garden um, that he grew up in and ran around in, and all of these weird sensory memories from his early life. What I love about the lyrics that Royce has chosen is that you really do get into this dream escape of Gorky and his, which works really well with his paintings too. His paintings are so. You know, they're abstract, they're very nostalgic of what he went through in Armenia, of his family, of his mother, and it comes through in the way that you wrote the, the text. And in that case, it's my responsibility to try to do that also with the music, to, to paint those words, to create this dreamscape. Fever dream, really, that phrase really sort of nails it in a lot of ways for me with this piece um because it is there's an element of um like r real sort of beautiful lyricism and very coloristic evocative sound um but there's also this sort of neurotic undercurrent that sort of ebbs and flows throughout um throughout the piece and so it's a bit of a challenge actually going between those two elements because I think if ever it gets too lovely, that's a problem. And if ever it gets too, you know, crazy, crazy, that's also a problem. So it's it's sort of this constant tug of war between those two sort of states of mind, I think. And I think also finding parts of it that are so lovely they feel sort of neurotic or upsetting, like the, the things that sort of flip over the other way. My, when we were talking about the sort of dreamlike aspect of it, I was thinking about uh, Schumann songs with Heine texts or something, when there's sort of a, a break with reality and the birds start talking to the protagonist or something, where it's all of a sudden like just super beautiful, but it's really wrong at the same time. And I think that's that's when it gets when it gets lovely, there's still a little, there's something wrong. He's not actually in Armenia. Yeah, he's not actually in his childhood. He's in his terrible, horrible current life. Basically, Gorky is like meant to be an opera character. He uh, grew up during the Armenian Genocide. He lost his family. He saw all of these horrible things. He came to the United States hoping for opportunity and just a better life. And then he got in a really bad car accident and got paralyzed for a while. And he had horrible marital troubles. And his studio burned down with all of his paintings in it. And then he committed suicide. So if there's any tension, I think it's him just living in this horrible life, constantly longing for what was good in his childhood. And it's an inner tension. I think that what what Mary's music does is like it really paints with a lot of colors. And if you see Gorky's paintings, it's nothing but color. Like they're just so beautiful and um, and bold. And so I think that there's there are moments of stunning boldness, um, especially in the piano part. I felt like, and, and in the the uh, viola part. Um, so there is this great um, swelling in the piece, and it is very dramatic. The tension comes from the character's drama. <laughs> 